Hey, what's going on? Ride it out. Jackson and I are here to give this message out to the warfighters that got their mountain bikes last week. So you've all had your bikes for a week. You've been out there, you've been riding, you've been getting used to the bike. And I've been getting some direct messages and some email questions about bike setup, uh, gear choices, and what upgrades to put on your bikes initially and, and the, the right place to put your money when upgrading your bike. So some of you that got these bikes are experienced riders and don't need to hear this, but there's some of you that are brand new at mountain biking and need to be guided in what I might call a right direction. I don't know what Jackson will call it. He's out there playing with his ball. But uh, this video is going to serve for the beginner rider that needs some uh, purpose, motiv motivation, and direction, if you will. So let's, talk, let's just dive right into it, start talking about mountain bike gear. Some of you have expressed concerns about your butt being sore, about whether you should get a new saddle, uh, or, or what you can do to get rid of that, uh, that saddle sore pain. As a new rider, you're going to have that saddle sore. You're putting pressure on uh, contact points that you're not normally used to, and you're using new muscles. But one thing out there that really, really helps that I was kind of against at first when I got into mountain biking, I was like, I don't need that. But then I started using them and now I don't ride with that one is a, a chamois. They can either come in bib form or short form, like under short form, like I'm wearing now. Uh, they have padding on the, uh, the butt, right? Like right where your quote unquote sit bones are on the seat. They got some some thick padding and into the grundle area to help with those pressure points and sitting in your saddle for long periods of time. I use the bib, the bib style for longer rides where I'm going to be sweating and possibly my shorts could be coming down and I don't want to have to keep stopping and adjusting them. So you got the bib style and a lot of bibs come with nowadays come with pockets in the back to stash your tools or stash a water bottle or, or some snacks. Um, these ones are by Endura. They are a supporter of Ride It Out, and these are probably a little bit more on the expensive side, but you could go to your local bike shop, go to a high-end or medium-end sporting goods store, and they may have some, uh, some bib shorts or some just regular liner shorts out there for you that you could use. All right, next, I don't wear gloves a lot, but when I do wear gloves, I wear gloves from Tasco. They're a company out of Southern California. Tasco stands for Totally Awesome Shirt Company, but they also happen to make totally awesome gloves. Uh, super lightweight gloves, good for year round. They make you know, lower, lower temperature gloves that are a little bit windproof. These Tasco gloves, I always have a pair in my back pocket just in case uh, for when I go riding. There's also other companies. Of course, there's a billion different mountain bike companies out there or clothing companies out there with gloves. Uh, some offer like knuckle protection or padded palms. That's just kind of shooter's choice when it comes to gloves. Jersey. Now, these are the ride it out jerseys I'm trying to get for you all. Um, a lot of newer riders, they just don't know. They go out there in a cotton t-shirt and cotton, when it gets wet, it gets heavy. It sticks to your skin. It doesn't... Uh, um, wick moisture well and it can you know cause more problems than good especially if you're wearing a camelback so a, a, uh, a good polyester jersey or some type of athletic fabric that will wick moisture away is good I wear a shirt underneath just because my nips they chafe and I don't like having chafed nips. It's uncomfortable. So, but a, a good uh, uh, moisture wicking jersey is definitely something you need. Uh, eye protection. You all got the email with the code for your Epic eyewear. These are the Epic links. Yeah, these are the links. These are in that $20 price range. I suggest these are good wraparound. They come in a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different uh, uh, colored frames and colored lenses. You can kind of tailor them to your need, and then you guys get the get a get these in that twenty dollar price range, free shipping with your code. All right, so 
Uh, let's talk about the bikes. This is the Alpine Trail, Marin Alpine Trail. This is the bike that I got after you all uh, left with your bikes. I picked this one up from Santan Bikes. And so it's similar to the Rift Zones and the Hawk Hills that you all received, but just a little bit different. It's a longer travel 29er version of uh, your all's bikes. So let's start in the cockpit. You know, this is, let's call this your cockpit, right? Think of you're a pilot and this is, you, these are your controls. So this is where your cockpit is. Um, you got your grips and on your left-hand side is gonna be your front brake. Right-hand side is gonna be your rear brake with your uh, gear range selector for your rear cassette. Uh, when you install the dropper post, you'll put the dropper post on the left-hand side and it'll actuate with your left thumb. So your handlebars connect to the stem. The stem is the single or the two-piece, single or two-piece, I guess, uh, piece of machine metal that connects the steer tube of the fork to the handlebars, which is, allows you to control your bike. Now, with your posture, if you find yourself kind of like hunched over or pushed way too far back, one quick way you can adjust your posture is with these stacks, these headset spacers here. You can loosen the stem off of the steer tube of the fork and put these headset spacers however you need to be in a good posture. Now, with riding, you want to think you want to have a good upright posture when you're pedaling and still keeping your back straight and your hip and your shoulders in line while you're going downhill and attacking a trail. So you just, it's gonna take a little bit of riding and finding what feels right. Um, don't be scared, they're just little hex bolts. Loosen them up and adjust your, uh, uh, your, your stack. Always make sure you tighten the headset cap, the cap on the top of the stem or the stem cap to crush all that together and press it all together so you don't have a loose headset and get uh, some play in like a gap in your fork and your headset and then get some play. So tighten that up first. Don't snug it down, but tighten it up to where there's no play, then tighten your side bolts. All right, so this is your fork. This is the front suspension of your bike. I believe all the bikes came spec with a RockShox fork. I am not a suspension expert. Uh, D or DVO is the main sponsor for Ride It Out for suspension. Uh, Rock shocks are good suspension. Um, still running it on this, but I'm not a suspension tuning expert, so there's just that disclaimer. So this is your fork. Uh, modern forks are either air sprung or have a cartridge spring sprung. I believe all of ours are air. So on the left side of your fork, you're going to have uh, the, the valve to use a specialized pump called a shock pump to air up your fork and also to air up your shock. Don't go trying to put a tire pump on your fork and think you're going to air it up. A, it's not going to work and don't go using an air compressor because there's moisture in an air compressor that you're going to inject into your suspension system and that'll mix with the oil and cause oil to cavitate and gum up and then your suspension is going to run like doo-doo. So you want to go off the manufacturer's recommendations for your uh, body weight and your height for how you set the fork. Um, and then you just go that off a of PSI. There'll be a gauge and a shock pump. You just pump it up to the PSI, go ride it and see how it goes. Now I just got done with my first real ride on this thing, my first real smash session. And if you can see my sag indicator, I've got just a little bit of suspension left. Now. With what I just rode and having that much suspension left, or uh, the, know that I use this much travel, I'm happy with that. Um, I'm real, real heavy on the bike and I really like to work the suspension. I'm happy with how that's set, so I'm not going to touch the fork anymore. So your front wheel is either going to be 27.5 or 29 inch diameter. If you've got the rift zone, you've got a 29er, and if you've got the Hawk Hill, you've got a 27.5. Your bikes did not come set up tubeless, so they are uh, set up with an inner tube on the inside. One recommendation I would say right off the bat is either go to Santan Bikes or go to your local bike shop and ask to get set up tubeless. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take the inner tube out of the equation and put a latex-based sealant inside of your uh, rim 
that will keep all those little goat heads and those little micropunctures and all those little uh, possible flats that will just take them out of the equation. And it lightens up your rolling weight a little bit. Uh, I use a sealant called Trucker Co. It's a company out of the Southwest. Super good sealant. It's probably one of the best sealants I've ever used. And I've tried them all. Um, but Trucker Co. And they are a Ride It Out sponsor. So if you need some sealant, hit me up. Uh, we have a Ride It Out account for Trucker Co. And I can get you the sealant you need for when you want to go tubeless. And if you, if you feel like you're a pioneer, um, plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do a quote-unquote ghetto tubeless setup. And you can do that with some Gorilla Tape and uh, hard will and some perseverance. And you'll make, you'll make a, tube, a ghetto tubeless. I just set these up ghetto tubeless before I went out on my ride today. Uh, PSI. So running PSI in your front and your rear tires, you want to be between 20 and 30 PSI. 20th is at the low side, but you get a lot, of, a lot of squish out of the tire. And 30 is at the high side, and it's going to be kind of bouncy. You know, you're going to uh, think of it's going to be more tympanic. It's going to be a, more air, and you're going to get more feedback from the trail. I like to run t around t between 20 to 25. I'd say 25 PSI with my tubeless setup. And... That allows me to have a lower air pressure. It takes out some of those small, like, chattery bumps. And I also run minesweepers inside my tires as well. Minesweepers are a tire insert that are a volume spacer and a rim protector. Especially as Southwest riders, we got a lot of rocks and a lot of really sharp, jagged terrain. And minesweepers is also a supporter of Ride It Out. So if you want to get set up with minesweepers, send me a direct message. I'll send you the discount code and you'll get some minesweepers delivered right to your front door. And they're real easy to install, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to install minesweepers and other tire inserts that are out there. All right, let's talk about our frames. Our frames are aluminum. Nice, good aluminum frame. I wanted to go aluminum frames with you all. Carbon frames, that's, you know, I, I believe in carbon. It's, it, it works, but with some of a, a newer rider, uh, aluminum is the way to go. It, it's, it's, it's solid and mine's an aluminum frame as well and I'm happy with how this frame is. Uh, there's a bunch, there's a zillion different suspension designs out there. Uh, this kind of uh, horse link style uh, suspension is what all of our bikes have and then we got the rear shock. So your rear shock is going to have a, I believe your guys have like that little blue lever and that's basically, um, it closes off an, an air valve or an air pathway to either make it harder to compress or easier to compress. And you want it easier to compress when you're going downhill to soak up those hits. And you want it harder to compress when you're pedaling uphill. Some people call it a climb switch. And let's re go back to the fork. You have the same compression adjustment on the fork as well. You can dial it from uh, low compression to high compression and take some of that bob and push out of your fork when you're climbing. Um, make sure that before you descend, I call it hitting a fun switch, I slip it to the, into the send mode so I can get my, uh, my smash on on the trail. Alright, so coming down, to this is the top tube, this is the down tube. Uh, this is your seat tube. And this is your linkage. So in your seat tube is your seat post. Your all's bikes did not come with a dropper post, if there's one piece of equipment I would suggest picking up is a dropper post. Now what a dropper post is, it's either air actuated or hydraulic actuated. And when I hit this lever and I apply my body weight to it, it drops it. Hence the name dropper post. So when the post is down, that's descent. Because you think about it, if you're going to try to descend and this thing's up in your button, it's just going to push you over the handlebars. So you hit your dropper post down for descending and up for climbing so you can get full leg motion and get full actuation of those pedals and get that power when you need to and you want to climb. So Tag Metals, good sponsor of ours. They make stems, they make handlebars, they make grips, and they make seats, and they make dropper posts. We get a 50% off discount through Tag Metals. Hit me up with that code when you're ready to buy your seat post. One other question is, 
what diameter do you need to get when buying that seat post? Our seat posts are 30.9 diameter. And you'll see, if you look in the back of, the, of your rigid seat post you have, you'll see a, a D with a zero and a line through it, and 30.9. That's the diameter. Um, tag metals, they come in two different lengths. I'm not sure the length's right off the top of my head. But if you're a shorter rider like me, go with the shorter length. And if you're a taller rider, go with the longer length. And the cool thing about droppers is you can stop it anywhere along its, its travel. You don't have to be all the way down or all the way up. You can stop it and close off that valve and put it anywhere you want along that travel. <clears throat> all right, coming down to the drivetrain. You've got your cranks or, your, or what your pedals are attached to. And TAG also makes really good pedals. You guys just got some basic pedals. Uh, I would suggest going and getting TAG's nylon pedals. They're 50 bucks retail, 50% off with our discount. Really good pedal. I've had these pedals for almost a year, and I threw them on this bike. And nylon, they will, if you, you take a good hard impact, they will chip, they will break. But they're $50, and I ride hard, and these are still going good. Come down your crank arm to your chain ring. So you have your front chain ring and your rear cassette. Our front chain rings are what they call a narrow wide chain ring. They have a narrow tooth and a wide tooth all the way around. And what that does is it puts opposing force against the chain and it locks the chain on to the chain ring so it doesn't slip off while you're going through some chatter and your chain's all bouncing around. Now with your chain, you want to lube that son of a gun up and keep it clean because uh, through time it's going to stretch and you get contaminants in there, you get rocks in there, it's just going to break. Chain lube I like to use is called SCC Slick by SEC Tech. They are a Ride It Out supporter. We have a discount code, hit me up. And that's one of those like set it and forget it type of chain lubes. You put a blue drop on each link, clean it off and you're probably good for a good couple weeks without having to do a reapplication. And you go to your back, like, so your chain, it goes back to your cassette. Now this is your, your cassette. I don't recall what speed cassette you all have. And now with speeds, all of ours are a one by setup. So one up front by 10 or 11 in the back. I believe we're all 11 speed. So we are a one by 11 setup. If it was a two by, we'd have two up front and then however many in the back. So your chain, the tension is held and it's able to shift through the derailleur. Now all of our derailleurs are clutch derailleurs. What that means is, it doesn't mean like in the ten, last 10 seconds of the game, it's the player you go to. A clutch system is this little lever right here that flips up and down on the derailleurs. Um, so what that does is it, it, it keeps tension on the chain while the, the chain's going through uh, the stroke or going through the motion and you're going, up, going downhill. I know this is a static shot. I can't zoom in because I'm doing this by myself, but follow with me and look at your derailleur and you will see a little uh, silver lever to flip up and down. Flipped up is the clutch is engaged. Then you push on it, it's going to be harder to move the cage of the derailleur forward. You push it down, and that cage is going to go forward a lot easier. So when you're riding and you're shredding the gnar, you want that. That's another fun switch that you want to have flipped up. Now, last but not least, let's talk about maintenance. These things are machines, and these are, are tools, tools of the trade. And like any other machine or tool, they need to be taken care of and they need to be maintained. Now, I want you all to go out there, ride your bikes hard, uh, beat, them, beat on them, because that's what they're made for. But just know that you're going to have, you're going to get spokes, you're going to start to come loose. Your chain's going to grow some slack in it. You may start having some shifting issues. Take it back to your local bike shop. Take it back to Santan Bikes and get a tune-up. Uh, your brakes are also going to need the hydraulic fluid in them chain. Um, after a, a, probably like four or five months of riding, that fluid it heats up and it, con it, goes, it contracts and goes back and it ends up just getting burnt and your, your brakes will start to fade 
and they'll, st they'll stop uh, working well. And the same thing with your pads. Your brake pads will wear down. If you drag brakes a lot when you ride, you're going to wear your pads down quicker. Um, I don't remember what pads you all have, but if you are the self-maintenance type of person, you can find anything you need to learn about or want to know about bike maintenance on YouTube. There's plenty of resources out there. Well, this is my third time trying to do this video, and every time I keep on, I forget something or I add something in. If there's any questions any of you all riders have, whether you're one of the Warfighter riders or you're a Ride It Out rider that's been part of the program for a while, <clears throat> shoot Ride It Out a direct message, join the Ride It Out rally point, post your questions up in there. There's plenty of knowledgeable riders in there that can point you in the right direction. Or hit up your local bike shop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hit up your local bike shop and ask them for assistance. Don't be afraid to to reach out. Now, you know, mountain biking. We're a family, especially ride it out. We're a fam we're a family, and we're only as strong as our newest rider. So, I want you all to be successful and stick with this sport as long as you possibly can. All right, that's all I got for now. Uh, you all uh, stay safe. Stay uh, motivated and get on your bikes and ride it out. One last thing I forgot, wasn't trying to leave you all out. You all out. Lady riders that got bikes. Um, Royal Racing is our gear supporter for Ride It Out and so is Destroyer Equipment. They don't have women specific stuff. I would suggest reaching out to a company like Zoic. They make women's shorts. Fox makes women's gear, Troy Lee Designs, and DeKine makes women's gear. I personally think DeKine makes the best looking women's mountain bike gear. They are not a supporter of Ride It Out, but they do make some pretty sweet looking lady rider gear out there. Uh, guy, girl, whatever you call yourself when you ride, link up with other riders. You're only as fast. You're only going to get faster with you and you ride with faster people. Hey, I'm a loner. I get it. I like to go out on trails alone, but sometimes I got to break out of my shell and go join a group and ride. When I come back down to Arizona, let's all get together, whoever can. Let's get a big group ride going and let's go have some fun. All right, now get on your bikes and ride it out. Yeah. One last, last thing. When you're out on trail and you have a flat, I suggest having some type of repair system, whether it's a plug kit with CO2 or uh, I like to carry these, they're called Goop. Uh, they are a supporter of Ride It Out, so hit me up and we'll get you some Goop. Um, it straps right onto your frame and you follow the instructions and it's got tire sealant and compressed air that will get you back to your vehicle. Uh, in, a in a future video, I'll go over what I carry in my pack or my waist pack, my little butt pack, whenever I go ride and like what I plan for on rides depending on distance. All right, now get on your bikes and ride it out.